Dobar dan v Evropskem magazinu. Evropska komisija je sprejela predlog, da bo Evropa stremela k krožnemu gospodarstvu in spodbujanju recikliranja v državah članicah. V krožnem gospodarstvu je recikliranje, popravilo in ponovno uporaba postalo norma. Poglejmo dva primera krožnega gospodarstva, ki ideje ponazorita v praksi. V krožnem gospodarstvu izdelki ob koncu življenjske dobe še zmeraj predstavljajo uporabne vire, ki jih znova vključimo v proizvodni krok. Izdelke ponovno uporabimo, obnovimo ali razstavimo in recikliramo v neprekinjenem ciklu. To je krožno gospodarstvo. Mnoge odslužene mobilne telefone lahko naprimer uporabimo še enkrat. Smo v Londonu, prestolnici države, kjer ima kar 95 odstotkov prebivalstva mobilni telefon. Od tega je 80 odstotkov pametnih telefonov. Gre torej za visoko tehnološke izdelke. Danes obstaja celoten sektor dejavnosti, ki služijo zrabljenimi mobilnimi telefoni. To je odlična priložnost za inovativne poslovne modele, ki se ukvarjajo z najemniškimi storitvami ali obnovo izdelkov. The phones all come to a unit, such as this one, a facility here, where we receive them, uh, we process the units, check that they're working or, or not working, as the case may be. We remove the data from those handsets and we then resell them. So we sell them on to international markets uh, all over Africa, all over Southeast Asia, and more so in, uh, recently, particularly with the increasing value inherent within the mobile phones, increasing markets also back to the UK and back to Europe. Tudi če naprave ni mogoče ponovno uporabiti ali obnoviti, jo še vedno lahko razstavimo in recikliramo. Za velike gospodarske družbe je krožno gospodarstvo bolj dobičkonosno od linearnega. Smo v Belgiji, v okrožju Hoboken, blizu mesta Antwerpen na sedežu podjetja Umikor. Podjetje se ukvarja s pridobivanjem plemenitih kovin, zlasti iz mobilnih telefonov, pa tudi iz druge visoko tehnološke opreme. We make products and we recycle them. So through our basic operation, we already emanate the circular economy ID. So the circular economy has indeed the potential to be a win-win-win, win for environment, win for business and win for jobs. Tukaj izločijo več kot 99 odstotkov plemenitih kovin, ki so v mobilnem telefonu. To so zlato, srebro, paladi in številne druge. Veliko pove tudi podatek. Iz 50 tisoč mobilnih telefonov je mogoče pridobiti kar kilogram zlata. V Umikoro objekt je bilo vloženih več kot 100 milijonov evrov. To je dobičkonosen posel, ki predstavlja način krožne okolske učinkovitosti, kakršnega bo Evropa potrebovala za zmanjšanje svoje odvisnosti od uvoženih surovin. S paketom ukrepov za premih krožnemu gospodarstvu želi Evropska komisija preprečiti nastajanje odpadkov in spodbuditi ponovno rabo in recikliranje izdelkov, ter s tem doseči učinkovitejše ravnanje z omejenimi viri. It is estimated that the measures will mean a reduction in demand for raw materials of around 20% and an increase of 3% in gross domestic product in the European, in the European Union. Krožno gospodarstvo pa je mogoče tudi pri najpreprosteših potrošniških izdelkih in ne samo, kadar gre za plemenite materijale. Tudi kavbojke, najbolj prepoznavne hlače na svetu, se naprimer podajajo v svet krožnega gospodarstva. Smo v Amsterdamu. V tem butiku kavbojk ne morete kupiti, ampak jih najamete. Po izteku najemne pogodbe dobite v zameno nove kavbojke, stare pa v celoti reciklirajo. Kot pravi izumitelj te formule, gre za storitev, ki temeli na učinkovitosti in ne na lestništvu. 
do you need to be the owner of the jeans? No, you want to wear the jeans. And um, if you wear the jeans and you can make the use of the jeans, it's, it's good enough. If then afterwards you can send them back to us and we make sure that we can reuse the raw material, then we are changing the economy and it's good for everything. But we still can use the jeans. Za to formulo se odločila Ana. Ceni, da so najete hlače izdelane iz čistega bombaža, ki je bil pridelan brez rabe pesticidov in z minimalno količino vode. Ali ste vedeli, da je za izdelava enih samih kavbojk potrebnih 8 tisoč litrov vode? In ste vedeli, da pridelovanje bombaža predstavlja zgolj dva odstotka svetovnega kmetijstva, porablja pa kar četrtino vseh pesticidov, ki jih letno uporabimo po vsem planetu. Nujno je, da s temi dejstvi se znanimo potrošnike. Je, je liest eigenlijk een spijkerbroek en uh, dan betaal je elke maand betaal je daar een bedrag aan. Uh, en na een jaar krijg je de mogelijkheid om hem terug te brengen. Uh, en dan gaat hij terug de cirkeleconomie in van uh, het, uh, het recyclen. Het is, het is een prachtig design, het zit heerlijk. Bombaš, iz katerega so izdelane kavbojke, je na to mogoče reciklirati v bombaš, ki je znova primeren za tkanje. Ko so kavbojke enkrat ali dvakrat ponošene, jih uničijo. Ta dragoceni materijal na to pošljajo v Italijo, kjer ga bodo ponovno spremenili v kavbojke. Smo blizu Firenc v Italiji. Tukaj v izjemno natančnem industrijskem procesu ta bombažna vlakna spremenijo v novo prejo, ki je pripravljena za tkanje. Vi kan prijeti. To je to, što je od Holland. To je gold. To je rubiš in sada je gold. Da reciklirani bombaž kot surovino vrnemo v klasični industrijski proces, so potrebni usposobljena delovna sila in več stoletje izkušen. Rezultat je nova bombažna preja. So we can use a lot of yarn from from the old denim, but we always have to mix it with new fresh cotton, bio cotton in order to make strong denim. So we can use all the old denim, but we have to mix it with new cotton. Zatem reciklirani bombaž spet predelajo v blago za kavbojke oziroma denim. Drugje v Italiji, v mesto Prato, prav tako blizu Firenc, se delavci odlikujejo po tkanju in izdelavi kavboj. Reciklirano blago se tke z istimi stroje kot blago izdelano iz sveže bombažne preje, ki je bila obdelana s pesticidi. Krožno gospodarstvo torej ne zahteva novih ulagan. Iz reciklirane bombažne preje lahko poleg kavbojk nastanete naprimer tudi polover ali športna majica. Krožno gospodarstvo spodbuja rast novih poslovnih priložnosti, kot je sistem sledljivosti. Vanj so on meni, da morajo biti stranke seznanjene z izvorom in poreklom vseh njihovih izdelkov. Grazie a quella che noi chiamiamo Remo Key e quindi un tag che è possibile mettere sul capo di abbigliamento oppure sul prodotto Remo, il consumatore può ovviamente con un tablet scannerizzare e conseguentemente avere immediatamente un film, un video che mostra non solo il consumo di fibra rigenerata rispetto alla fibra nuova ma anche il risparmio di acqua, energia e anidride carbonica. Questa è economia circolare. L'idea alla base di Remo è il movimento. Remo non è un marchio, ma è un movimento che serve per sollecitare, per diffondere nel mercato l'idea di economia circolare, l'idea di tracciabilità all'interno della filiera dell'abbigliamento, l'idea di trasparenza e quindi promuovere prodotti sostenibili. U zadnjih letih je Evropska unija začela sprejemati politike in cilje za spodbujanje trajnostne naravnanosti evropskih podjetij, da bi jim pomagala pri zmanjševanju količine odpadkov in učinkovitejši rabi viro. V svojih najnovejših predlogih, zbranih v paketu o krožnem gospodarstvu, bo Evropska komisija zastavila ključne elemente, s katerimi namerava sprostiti gospodarski potencijal Evropske unije. Pri tem bodo rast in delovna mesta združili z vačno rabo virov. 2 milijon nov jobs bodo kreirati v Evropskem uniju, 
and uh, European uh, businesses would save uh, around uh, 600 billion euro through measures uh, uh, to promote uh, uh, reuse, uh, uh, recycling of materials uh, and uh, uh, eco-design. Za ustvarjanje novih delovnih mest v Evropi mora biti vlaganje v krožno gospodarstvo dobičko nosno. Naraščajoče tržno povpraševanje po krožnih pristopih v proizvodnji izdelkov in pristoritvah bi ustvarilo gospodarstva, ki prinašajo koristi tako podjetjem in potrošnikom, kot tudi okolju. Evropski zaposlovalni stroj je mlade pustil nad sedilo. Evropska unija pa upa, da bodo nova orodja, ki jih zdaj uvaja, ta trend spremenila. The economic crisis has taken a huge toll on jobs in Europe. The unemployment rate has exceeded 10% and among young people it's even 23%. In countries such as Spain and Greece, over 50% of people under 25 are out of work. To reverse this negative trend, Europe has activated its job machine, a complex piece of engineering bringing together European strategies, national policies and regional and local agents to create more and better jobs across Europe. One of the key pieces of this machine is the EU programme for employment and social innovation. Following an agreement between the European Parliament and the Member States, the programme has a fund of more than 800 million euros for the next six years to be used for promoting social solidarity, strengthening the European job network and fostering entrepreneurship. But how will ordinary citizens searching for a job benefit from all this? Follow us and we'll show you. Part of the money, 20 million euros per year, will go to improving EURES, the European Job Mobility Portal, connecting supply and demand. The service has more than 800 advisors ready to support job seekers in their hunt. You can already begin by creating your profile, uploading your CV in Europass format, which businesses will then have access to. But what I advise is that you also consult various information sources on the country which you're interested in and then take a look at the job openings in the different countries according to the job function or the field of work. Another important tool for increasing job opportunities for young people is the so-called youth guarantee. The goal is to prevent under 25 year olds from being out of training, education or work for more than four months. To achieve this, the EU will allocate 10 billion euros from the European Social Fund, topped up with another 6 billion for regions where youth unemployment has reached critically high levels. But how will this translate into concrete job offers? National employment agencies may give us the answer. Under the European Youth Guarantee, what we can now propose as a first step is the opportunity to meet an employer so that you can build on your work experience within a business and also receive practical training in the field for three to six months. During this time, there'll be a cheque of 820 euros at the end of the month. Not bad for a stash, but too little if what we're after is a real job. So what else can Europe do? Encouraging and enabling those with a good business idea to set up their own company or become self-employed is also a way to create more jobs. This is why over the next six years, the EU will allocate more than 900 million euros to facilitate access to microcredit and support startups. If you have a project you want to start up as a freelancer, Credal can help you, thanks to the EU's support, which guarantees a large share of the credit we award to vulnerable people who want to run an independent project, and we finance this project up to 15,000 euros at a rate of 6%. The question is, with 26 million people unemployed and wages down in 18 out of 28 European countries, can Europe's efforts to boost employment really be successful? Through the annual growth survey, which sets out the EU priorities for the next year and the European semester, which promotes closer economic coordination, member states and European institutions are trying to boost job creation by making labour markets more flexible yet still secure for workers. But reforms take time and new jobs are still scarce, so it'll be a few years before we'll know whether the current European employment strategy has borne fruit.
To je bil Evropski magazin. Bodite z nami tudi prihodnji teden.